good friends good morning your friend in the remy ilona is here once again to talk on a very topical issue i just finished listening to senator or retired senator shehusani I have known this gentleman or I have known about this gentleman for quite some time. I followed his activities in the days of people like Shif Gani Fawemi, the icon of human rights activities in Nigeria. Shehu Sani stuck out because the majority of the human rights activists we are from the Yoruba ethnic group. Shehu Sani was one of the few Fulani, Fulanese that were in the struggle to make sure that Nigeria becomes a country run with human rights. That was when I took notice of the guy and I developed a liking for him. I listened to him on channels television. He spoke about a lot of things and he said very nice things, but I'm only concerned, or I was only concerned, or I paid special attention to the area that concerned the Igbos in the very long discussion he had with channels. That's on the Igbo presidency matter. Sheikh Hussani was very fair, was very humane, was very honest. His views we are godly too. He asked a question if the Yoruba, the Fulani, and our neighbors to the south, the South South have held the top position in Nigeria, why shouldn't the Igbos hold it? It was very refreshing to find a Nigerian deciding to be fair, deciding to be humane, deciding to be kind. We must not fool ourselves into convincing ourselves that the presidency of, material, of Nigeria is not important. It's extremely important and is a marker of acceptance. It's a disgrace to the country that one of the major ethnic groups is effectively barred from that position. More especially when even children in the country know that Igbos are not the least competent ethnic group. In fact, Igbos are among the most competent ethnic groups in Nigeria. But Nigerians, unless they disappoint me in 2022-23, have decided that Igbos will never preside over the affairs again. But I hope they disappoint me. I hope they do the right thing. Now, I will get to the second reason why I decided to talk. And hopefully, uh, Sheikh Hussani will hear my voice. And Igbos too. More importantly, Igbos will hear my voice. Sheikh Hussani said twice that a section of the country should not be deprived of what it ought to get because of population. I understood that he was inferring that Igbos have a small population. Well, to be very candid, I do not know the population of Nigeria and I do not trust the figures. So, I do not believe that Nigeria is 200 million. Likewise, I do not believe that Igbos have become a minor or a population or a, an ethnic group, a nation with a small population. But be that as it may be, Igbos, now listen to me. We should listen to everybody, even to people that don't like us. But in this case, I have no evidence that Sheikh Hussani does not like us. From the way he spoke, 
he likes us and he likes humanity. So, what applies in the case of people that don't like us, also apply in the case of this gentleman that was fair to our position. Igbos, we need to beef up the Igbo population. If this generation of Igbos had been the generation of the Igbos that survived genocide in Biafra, nothing would have been saved. The generation that survived genocide, you know what they did? They carefully, prayerfully rebuilt the population, what was left. I have very close relations who we are 69, who we are 75, who went and married again to produce more children. Our ancestors built very large families because they knew the value of human beings. They knew that human beings trump anything. Unfortunately, Igbos always get the very wrong notions of the West. Igbos think that everything they believe that quotes the white man does is ideal. And because they think this way, they don't really know what's going on in these places they admire so much. These places they conjure images of as heaven. So many European countries are allowing immigrants in without saying so because they know that their populations are no longer sustainable. The same thing applies to many other countries in the G7. They know that their populations are going down. Animals like lions that we are not seeing in Europe. Let me not mention lions specifically, but wild animals driven into the wilds due to growth in human populations have been noticed in sections of Europe and Japan. Madukejiaka. Human beings are the greatest assets. The Igbo population has to be rebuilt. Every Igbo that should have children, that could have children, should have children. There should be up to 100 million people of Igbos, of people that identify as Igbos today. And note, whatever I'm telling you is what I'm telling myself too. I'm not saying that what I'm advising Igbos to do are easy things. They are not easy for me to do. Likewise, they are not easy for every or any Igbo to do. But the world is not structured in such a way that people who are not ready to do difficult things will try. I'm living in the United States today. It's the number one country in the world because the people that built it worked 24 hours. Likewise, to build this Igbo nation of our dream, we have to be ready to face the difficult tasks. Thank you, everybody.